Hello, fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your midday market update for Monday. That's right, Monday the 9th of April. Is this the end of the bull market in stocks? Is AOL cashing out? And has gold bottomed out? We will also be looking at three stocks on the move today. eBay, Dr. Horton, and Sherwin-Williams. Each of these stocks are very interesting. We want to take an in-depth look at them. So let's start right away and um, get started. So, But first, maybe you want to consider personal one-on-one -on -one Market Club coaching for you. Is it right for you? Well, the call is free and the consultation is free, so you've got nothing to lose. So just give us a call, 877-219-1482. You've got some great people who can help you improve your trading. It's just that simple. You're going to learn the Market Club way and how you can improve your trading in 2012 and beyond. So let's get started with the markets. And we're going to go right to our portfolio manager. In the portfolio manager, S&P 500, we have a plus, excuse me, a minus 70, which is the emerging trend to the downside. We're down 14.45 points, over 1%. We got down to below the 1800 level. I'm going to show you why that's an important level to watch. So let's go to the charts and scope this out and you can see basically we had a weekly signal which was an exit uh, at 1386 and that was today you can see the signal right there and as you know we've been long this market uh, on the monthly basis since the 1292 now we're not negative on this on a monthly basis we're still positive on this but what I want to share with you is this observation which I talked about a little bit last week but I'll go into more detail today so I'm going to take the weeklies off all these signals off and just sort of make this a very simple picture so I'm going to put a Fibonacci tool on you know we've used this before many times in fact we can probably let's just scope this out so we really get this close so you get a very close picture of what we're looking at so click on the Fibonacci tool here it gives you the little yellow box right here and we're going to go from the highs we saw this day, which is on April 2nd. Draw it to drag it down to the lows right here. And that shows you some very important Fibonacci points. Now, we've already hit the 50% pullback on the Fibonacci, which is terrific. So we've had basically four days in a row here where we've been down. Now, the question is, are we going to be down tomorrow? My expectations are, yes, we'll be down early in the morning. Uh, but getting down between the 61.8 and 50% level, between 1371 and 1380, I believe is going to be a buying opportunity as opposed to a selling opportunity. You can see our major trend in the multi-trade triangles are positive, and you want to trade with a longer-term trend. So if you are looking to get in this market, it may be a good time around the 1372, 1373 level, and then you can put a very tight stop on this just below the Donchian trade channel, which comes in uh, right now about 1365. So it's a very, very tight stop. Um, so I think that's something to look at tomorrow. So let's go to our next market. We're going to be looking at the Dow Jones uh, 30. And you can see we've touched the bottom of the range here on the Dow Jones. And if we put, we've had the double top, you can see that right here. And let's just put our Fibonacci tool in there again and drag that down to the lows. And you can see we've hit the we've hit the Fibonacci number there already. So I think for the most part this market has done and has cooked on the downside. I think we've seen enough for the moment. I think we'll see a, probably a, an improvement from these levels. It may take a few days, but I think we'll see an improvement from the current levels. Also, we are very heavily oversold, very similar to these periods right here. And every time we've been to these periods, we've had a rally. So you just have to look at, uh, let me get my illustrator on to show you that in more detail, but generally speaking, every time we've been down here, right here, you can see it's been an opportunity to actually buy the market. So I think we'll see a bounce probably in the next couple of days to the upside. So let's see how that plays out. And let me just clear the screen here. So, and let's go to our next market. And that next market we're going to be looking at is going to be the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is pretty much the same pattern there. Uh, let's scope this up a little higher. So we, we're seeing a pullback. The NASDAQ actually has improved from its lowest levels, but uh, let's just draw the Fibonacci in again. So these are very important numbers because the reality is a lot of people don't look at the Fibonacci, and certainly uh, people who trade this at the home, 
don't look at that, but professional traders certainly do. And you can see we haven't ha had the same <coughs> excuse me, type of pullback in this market. Of course, the NASDAQ was the leader on going on this upside, but obviously a lot has to do with what goes on with Apple. So that was under pressure early today. <coughs> I beg your pardon. So here we are. We had a 38.2% pullback, and now we're starting to regroup. And I think we could see these markets do better. So let's go to our next market. Next market is going to be silver. Silver is not so lucky, sort of on the defensive today. But really, for the last five days, we've just sort of gone nowhere, sort of sideways. But we're down towards the lower end of the range. 31 uh, seems to be like a support level. It needs to break through there to get something significant. A 30. 0 0.20 number. This is spot gives you a 51.8% uh, retracement there. So I think for the most part, this is going to continue to go sideways. Our trade triangles there are long term positive, shorter term, intermediate term negative. So trading range minus 60. So you know how to do that with the Fibonacci and also the Williams percent R indicator. Much the same picture in. Gold, uh, gold is actually uh, improved on the day. It's uh, but it has a minus 75. Uh, still, the monthly and the weekly are negative. But we're getting to a point now. I think we're at the lower end of the range in terms of how far this market is going to go down. We've gone. Remember, we've talked about going outside of the Fibonacci, outside of the Donchian trade challenge. I beg your pardon. And we've always seemed to come back. So here we are outside coming back. So again, we were looking for this market to go down to 1620. It was a Fibonacci number. It certainly got that number. So I think for the most part, this market has done going down anymore. So let's see how, uh, since they done and dusted, which is an expression in Australia they use when it's, something's over. But uh, also with copper, you had the copper market come back down. If we scope this out just a little bit more, you'll see what, what I'm talking about in terms of support. I mean, look at how many times you have seen this market hit support in copper. It's just, it's amazing right here, right here, and now right here. So you can just sort of draw that support line, boom. Every time we've got here, we've gone higher higher. And I think probably we'll do this same thing uh, with this market. It's, it's certainly the longer term trend, which is right here, is positive, while the intermediate and short term trends are negative. So these will be some negatives in the hand, but this, generally speaking, is still positive. And we still have a great trading range to go through. So it's 395 on the upside and 370 on the downside. So this is support. And the other one, of course, is resistance, which is right here. And so I think that's what's going to happen. And I think we have to pay close attention to this market. But I think, generally speaking, we'll probably see a bounce from these current levels. So let's clear the screen and go to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at, of course, is going to be crude oil. Crude oil, again, has gone down below the area here. But it's finding support. And we think this is the low end of the transition. Again, we're going to use our Fibonacci tool, which we already have on the screen. Draw from the highs here down to the lows, and you get right into this Fibonacci area where the market has rallied. So I think what we're doing, what we're seeing now, in my opinion, I'll just take this off the screen for now, is that I think we're seeing a situation where the market has come down into this Fibonacci zone. And it's going to base out, and I think it's going to start back up again. So we want to watch that very carefully. Obviously, this is a trend line to watch on the upside if we break through that probably over the 104 level, we'll get this market rallying a little further. But generally speaking, this is a longer term bull market in our, our opinion, but we want to be careful as we have our monthly is still positive, still in the still in the black, uh, 101.45 right now. We're long almost two, $2 in that. The weekly is short from 104, and the daily is, which we don't pay that much attention to, uh, except if you're a really super short-term trader, and you have to be very nimble to do that. So let's uh, look at this thing in the next uh, couple of days and see how it's working out. But generally speaking, I think we're going to see a bounce from these current levels. So let's clear the screen. And actually, if we clear the screen and we go down a little bit further, you'll see that the market's actually setting itself up for a bullish divergence, which means we can see this market pop up from the upside. So next market we're going to go to is the, well, it's the USO. It's the equivalent. You can see we've got a nice doji line coming back into the Donchian trading channel. I think we're going to see this market pop. Certainly a move over the highs that we're seeing Thursday at 39.35 will be a positive. So that's the level we're watching very carefully this week. So let's go to our next market. 
and that's going to be the euro dollar. We're going to drop the uh, the index we were following for very many times because we think the euro dollar is probably a more accurate reading, and you can trade this much e much easier than you can do the index. So here we are. We are back in the situation. Now look at the symmetry of this, and look at the the way this market has sort of just sort of gotten to boom, 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 and this is basically. Look at the cycle. It's just perfect. So the next move is, I think we'll see the euro dollar actually going higher, possibly up to the midpoint of the channel. That's a 132. And certainly there's big resistance around the 134 area, which you can see quite clearly here. You see all these lines. This week of action we had over here where the market could not get through 134. So that's on the upside. That's the big resistance area. So let's see how that plays out. And uh, let's go to our next market. And uh, that is going to be, well, we're going to miss this market. I'm going to take this off. Uh, so let's just skip this Reuters Jeffrey. Oh, excuse me. I think this, is the, this is the Reuters Jeffrey CRB index. And uh, we thought this uh, market would actually be improving from levels. But right now we have a minus 100. So we cannot get enthusiastic about the upside at the moment. I think we'll still see this market do go higher later on. But for the moment, we have to respect our trade trends. All of them are negative. Now, it doesn't mean to say we can't have a bounce tomorrow or the next day, but certainly the market is very heavily oversold. Possible bullish divergence here. So let's watch that in the next few days, and we'll see how it plays out. But uh, looking at our next market is AOL. Uh, now, this is an interesting stock because AOL is kind of like a Internet has been. Is that the right word? I'm not sure if it is. But uh, you can see today it's uh, it's up dramatically. And one of the reasons it's up so dramatically is because it's selling a billion dollars worth of its patents uh, to Microsoft. It's up 45% uh, percent today. Did we catch this move? Oh, yes. The trade triangles don't miss big moves. They really don't. Now, here's a good example of something. Somebody knew this is taking place because they have to leave their imprints or footprints in the market. And if we scope this out just a little bit further, you'll see our first buy signal was right here at 1582. And that was on January 9th. So this deal has been in the works for a while. It was just culminated here. But you can see how the market basically turned around on the 6th of January and started going higher. Now, those who are long term would have caught this move. If you're an intermediate term trader, you would also caught it because here's the last weekly buy signal we had was 1846. And the market's currently trading at 2677. Can this market go higher? I have no idea, but it doesn't matter because the trade triangles will tell us when to get out. So let's see how that plays out. But there's a nice move with the trade triangles with AOL. So let's clear the screen, go to our next market. Next market's eBay. Now, this is a little bit different. eBay uh, basically is longer term positive, OK? 33.10, market's at 36.38. So you can see the signal here on the monthly right here. On the February 3rd, 33.10, market had a nice move up. We had a signal to get out at 36.74. That's for intermediate term traders only. If you are a long term trader, let me just write this down so you actually can see this. So if you're a long-term trader, you just use the monthly trade triangles. If you're intermediate, so an intermediate-term trader would use this, the weeklies, to get in and out, initially taking the signal from the monthly right here but then using the weeklies to get in and out of the market. Let me give you a good example. You would have gone along right here, as we said, at 33.10, OK? This is for intermediate term traders, OK? You got long on the monthly. You would have exited the position right here at 35.74. So you would have made $2.5, not bad in a very short period of time. And currently, you'd be out of the market right now. So intermediate tra traders would be out on the sidelines. And long-term traders would remain long. So that's the key to using the trade triangles. So again, let's see how that plays out in this particular stock, eBay. Uh, it looks as like it's putting a nice performance in today. And to clear the screen and just look at that. Uh, if we go today, we have actually up 2.19% uh, when the market's, the market's down. General market's over, down over 1%. So that's a pretty good performance in my book. So let's go to our next market. Next market is DHI, Dr. Horton. 
And uh, you can see here, this market also has a bullish engulfing line. It's up 2.17%. Uh, However, the long-term trade triangles remain green, which means it's positive from 12 07, it's 1434 last. The weekly are negative from 1464. So you can see basically uh, where you would have gotten out of this market. And generally speaking, uh, this market, if you're a long term trader, this seems to be like a pretty low risk uh, area to get long. And I think that uh, you could basically, I think if we were to move below this low here, then below, let's say below 13 and change, uh, it's, I don't think you'd be. Hurting yourself, 13, I think below 1350, but generally speaking, you're currently trading, uh, we're currently trading around 1434, which is a nice price. So you've got maybe an 80 cent risk, but I think we'll see this market go up and test the 16 level again. So let's see how that plays out. Last stock we're looking at is Sherwin Williams, and uh, that's up today. And let me take off, move that, and let's just put our, take our Fibonacci tool off, which is a little bit confusing there. Boom. And you can see this market is actually uh, up about 1.17%, but this has been up for quite some time. You can see along from 86.45 right there, and also a last weekly that came in was 87. So you can get a very nice, very, very nice profit in this market. So generally speaking, the trade triangle is going to keep you on the right track. And again, if you'd like to have some personal one-on-one -on -one market club coaching, Give us a call, 877-219-1482. I think you'd really enjoy it. We have some great coaches, and I think they can really, really help you. So it's a free consultation and a free call. So don't delay. Give us a call today. I'm Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great trading day, everyone.